Uh, Just Rusty, I received and read your prevention myths book. I was annoyed being told I had to go on statins because of heart risk based on cholesterol panel. I wondered if there was a more direct measure. I think what you're saying is your doctor told you you need to go on statins based on cholesterol level. That's the typical standard. And as you may know, just Rusty, I think that's misdirected. I do think cholesterol levels matter. LDL matters. You see that, for example, with FH, familial hypercholesterolemia. These are people that have LDL levels 180 or above. Before I get a whole lot of haters on that comment, I will acknowledge that that number also includes a lot of people, lean mass hyper responders. And if you have any questions about that, there's a good website on it. It's the cholesterol code. Now, and the FH group says that there is no overlap between lean mass hyper responders and FH. That's not true. I think one of the things that both groups are ignoring is that there are over 2,000 different variations of FH. And I can tell you, you know, from my experience, there is a significant overlap between FH and lean mass hyper responders. However, before you tune out and say, this is some internet doc talking about lean mass hyper responders, I've never heard of that, don't know what it is. That has been recognized by a lot of more mainstream groups. I'm mainstream. I used to teach this at Hopkins. Now even folks at Harvard are talking about people getting high LDL levels from going on a low carb diet. And they're also acknowledging that, you know what? That's not causing increased risk. So I went down a long bunny hole just rusty about lean mass hyper responders and FH because of the issues around LDL quote, bad cholesterol, end quote. That's a bad term as well. My point is, yes, I understand some of the concern about cholesterol, but a far, far bigger concern is unrecognized prediabetes. And I think that's where you're going as well, that we really need to understand what the true risk factors are. And it's far more in the prediabetes, diabetes area than just moderately high LDL. Just rusty, CIMT and calcium seem to be them. That's what I use, IMT and calcium. And now one of the problems that we have to remember and look at is garbage in, garbage out. When you use a tool, you need to understand what that tool is telling you. And that's one of the things we saw in this video today or the study today. That study showed you go on a low carb diet, you tend to increase your calcium. Well, some people might think, well, that's causing an increase in cardiovascular risk. As you saw from the Honda study, that's not always the case. And in fact, you need to know what you're looking at. That's the reason I said that. Yes, IMT especially, because IMT is the only thing that shows soft plaque. Calcium score is helpful, and there is. Here's where some of the concern and confusion comes in. If you take a group of people and you separate them by calcium scores, the folks that have higher calcium scores are usually going to be, as a whole, a population that has more cardiovascular risk. So having understood that, then the authors and most people go on to say, well, then anytime your calcium score goes up, then you're increasing your risk. That's where the assumptions, the filters go wrong. And we end up with stuff like studies coming out saying low carb diet increases your risk.